Gentlemen's Club Whiskey, I'm your host, Mr. Mark Antimate, the pontiff of Japanese whiskey and your Tokyo godfather here. Today's review, I'm going to be talking about the Suntory Kakubin White Label, aka the Suntory Kakubin Clear and Smooth. Inside the previous video, I did a review over the original Suntory Kakubin, the one that comes with the yellow label. And this one has been around since 1937. This is not Suntory's very first whiskey release, but it is one of their first releases coming from their uh, master blender and founder, uh, Mr. Shinjiro Tori, had made this one in 1937. And today we're talking about another one inside of the line called the Clear and Smooth, aka the White Label. As you guys can see, they look pretty much identical. They come inside the same uh, square-shaped bottle with a tortoise kind of shape shell with this with this uh, embossing or etching on here of the glass with all of this uh, additional glass sticking out that you can touch. It's a quite nice bottle here, and uh, it has a nice gold foil uh, heraldry. Uh, what do you call this damn thing? I'm at a loss of words here. Let me check the book. I don't need to check the book. It's called the Coat of Arms. So it has this nice gold foil Coat of Arms seal there. And uh, it's, it's a pretty high-end looking bottle for what it is. But it's actually cheap stuff on the inside as this only costs roughly uh, somewhere around approximately 1,300 Japanese yen, give or take, could be a little bit more, could be a little bit less. But this one right here, clear and smooth, although still part of the Kakubin line, has been out since 1992. This is kind of a new release within this series, so to speak. So, interesting story about this before I open it up real quick. Throughout the whole pandemic, this thing has not been on the shelf. And even before the pandemic has started, head started, it had been gone off the shelf for some time, which made me believe that it was discontinued. And then just completely out of nowhere, about a month and a half ago, this thing, uh, it was just on every single supermarket shelf that there, that there is inside the liquor section. And it's just going from one end to the other so it's it's back for whatever reason it's back i guess uh people were complaining and they is back by popular demand so to speak so here it is let's go ahead and open it up and see what this one is like now i reviewed this back in circa 2016 i was not a big fan of it then but comparing this one to the what is this right here? To the yellow label, the actual original bona fide cocky bin. I thought that this one was quite trash. And I thought that this one was a little bit better. But still not that great. Now that my tongue is more experienced, about six years later, six to seven years later, this is better than I remembered. So hopefully this one is going to be even better than that. Hoping you know, if memory serves me correct. So let's go ahead and put a lid on it. Let's go ahead and put a lid on all my talking as well, all my rambling. Let's put this up there. Swish this around. This one is still the same 40% uh, ABV that is found in the original, but it's, it's clear and smooth. The smell is a lot nicer. You get a little bit... It still has a, a little bit of an ethanol type edge to it, but not as strong as the original. Let me go ahead and put the original up here in front of my face as well so that you guys can get a look at both of these as I'm talking about them. So this one has less of an edge to it on the nose as this one. 
but still have some of that ethanol in there. A little bit of a maple type smell to it. Quite nice. Better than I remembered. It's quite nice. It's actually quite nice for the price. If they change the formula from the time that it had become discontinued to now, it's actual. It's actually possible. Who knows? Ooh. Got some bite to that. Mmm. Can I say that it's better than this? Now that I'm trying them back to back again. They're just different. They're not necessarily... Yeah, they're just different. I think I'm actually liking the original one more. When it comes to the nosing, comparing them side by side, this one does smell better, the clear and smooth. But on the palette, on the finish, not that it's necessarily harsh, it's just... It's, it seems more rough around the edges than this. Let me just... Let me try this again. Not that it's really smoother than the original. They're just different. They're just unique in their own ways. It still tastes like part of the family. It belongs with this. It's just different. Let's see if we can open this up by adding a little bit of water inside of here. That's about a teaspoon of a drop. Which means that, you know, maybe we take down the remaining whiskey that I have inside of here to about 35% ABV. Just to try to open it up. Make it not be so harsh and burning when you put it on your tongue. When you water it down, obviously it's going to become smoother, which it has, but does it necessarily make it better? Better than this? I can't really say so. Not a lot to tell inside of there flavor-wise. The finish is not lingering. There's not really much there. Is it disgusting? Is it something that's uh, repulsive to drink? Being a very cheap whiskey? No. It's just... If there's a word that I'm looking for... I'm going to call it bland is what it is. Just absolutely bland. It's like it's void of any type of flavor or filling or soul. It has no character to it. It's just, yeah, what a what a waste is what you feel like. I guess, <laughs> I guess the clear means uh, bland. That, that would be good, a good way to put it. Maybe it'll go good inside of a highball. Maybe it'll go good mixed with a uh, with a Coca Cola. But as it stands now, there's just not enough there to. I can see why it went away the first time. You know, when I first tested these out for the very first time, these were the first two whiskeys that I've ever conducted a review on. So at that point in time, because I was not used to such a strong harsh taste uh coming from whiskey and i'm trying to get adjusted to how whiskey is this was better for me at that time at that point in time but now that i'm an experienced tongue and i can handle 40 percent, 43 46 50 and beyond and i've you know tasted somewhere around 400 different whiskeys from all different countries and regions just there's nothing to this anymore. It just doesn't mean anything to me. I don't feel anything. There's no sensation. Yeah, it's quite... It's not worth your money. It's definitely not worth your money. 
if you're going to come to Japan and you really trying to save on the coin and you want to get something here that is not available in your region of the world, because this is not available in the United States or even in uh, the EU. This is only in Southeast Asia and Japan. But, you know, you want a cheap souvenir, you can go ahead and pick this one up. But I would highly recommend just to leave this one sitting on the shelf. Yeah, uh, Your friends are not going to miss it. You're not going to miss it. Do you need to get both if you're on a trip to Japan? No, don't don't uh, weigh down your uh, your luggage just to put this inside of there. I mean, that would be a complete waste. Get something else. Get something like a, um, what could I recommend? Get like an Akashi or what's another cheap Japanese whiskey that you can get? Uh, Nika has some good ones on the cheap, so don't even need to waste your time with this, really. All right. That's all I got to say about that. Salute to you wherever you may be out inside the world. Make sure that you guys drink responsibly. And as always, gentlemen, you guys know what to do. Keep it classy. I'm out. Mm -hmm.